Uh, okay, so today we are going to see how we can solve uh, for Beer's law. Some people say Beer's Lambert law as well. So simply the Beer's law says that absorbance of a solution is proportional to the concentration in the particles in that solution. Uh, so A proportional to the C. Then in order to uh, make an equation, we have uh, put two constant, this Greek letter epsilon, which is the mole absorption coefficient, and then the L, some equations, some textbooks report it as B as well. Either way, both of them says the optical path length. So usually if we are using a cuvette, it's going to be one centimeter. So then uh, what we can do is we can, uh, how we are going to uh, calculate, when we are trying to calculate, first we will be uh, trying to rearrange this equation. So we can get A equals L times C, which means Y equals MX times. So we can change concentration, which is our independent variable in the X axis. And according to the concentration, the absorbance is going to change, which is our dependent variable or which will go to the Y axis. So I have a set of data like that. So here I have made a dilution series or parallel dilution set with different concentrations. And then I have measured them uh, in the spectrophotometer and I got the absorbance value. So I have a set of X data point and Y data point. So how I would uh, draw a plot from this. So I'm gonna select this and I'm going to go to the insert scatter plot, choose the scatter. Now we see that automatically uh, my um, X axis is the concentration and Y is the absorbance. For some people I have seen that it is switched. So you can go to the select data and edit and make sure the X values. So here it says C3, C7. So C is this column. So from C3 cell to the C7 column. So that means my X values are correct. If it is incorrect, you would simply delete this and select it. And Y is same. So I'm checking it. Okay, absorbance value. So it has taken correctly. And then I have to add. A, so I would choose this where I got the axis title. So I would say absorbance at 550 nanometer and also the concentration. So absorbance doesn't have any units, but the concentration has. It's molarity M, so I would put that. So I can put this for the um, calibration curve for whatever. This, so if this is food dye or whatever, what's your solution name? So I would let solution A something. So you would put a meaningful title. And then you also can put a trend line. So there are several methods. So what I do is like this, right click, you can go to add print line or you click on the data points and you see this plus point and you click there. So there also you have the trend line. So trend line is there and we need the equation. So you go to the more option. So you go down on here and then we have display equation and R square. So the R square values gives you like how well these data points are fitted to your uh, this line. And then uh, what's this is, so we wanted a y equals mx, but we have got a y equals mx plus c. So there is a small intercept due to the uh, instrumental or measurement errors and all the practicalities. So, but still this, it's fine. It still holds as like y is the absorbance and there's a uh, slope and we have a x. So then once you have that, what we can do is, so now uh, in the unknown sample, so we have an unknown sample that we don't know the concentration. Now we want to figure out what's the concentration. So you can use this calibration curve. In theory, in real life, like what exactly happening is, so I'm measuring the same unknown sample three times and I'm getting slightly different varied absorbance. So it's better in science, we always tend to take multiple measurements to get a uh, average and a standard deviation, standard error, right? So I have taken three uh, replicates, we call it as a triplicate. So what is this test is of 0 0.532. So whereas my absorbance 0 0.532 is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. So somewhere here. So I should be able to read it from this graph. 
So, okay. So, that means it should be somewhere between 6 to 7. So, this uh, concentration axis is too much crowded. So, what I would do is I double click it. And on the right side, I go to the number. And it's in scientific. And for the decimal places, I would put 0. So, now it's much clearer. So, okay. So, it should be somewhere between 6 and 7. Uh, power 10 to the power minus 6. So that's an idea, rough idea. So how you would do it in Excel? So in Excel, what exactly happens is, so you have this equal equation y equals mx, right? Now you have to solve for x, that is the concentration. Remember, x axis is concentration. So if I solve for x, what exactly going to happen? So x is going to be equal to y minus 0 0.0357 divided by this 80,715, right? So Y means that particular absorbance value and you minus that intercept and divide by the slope. So let's see how we can do that. So I go to that uh, cell and that is why, why I want to calculate. So I put an equal and then Y is my absorbance, which is this one and I minus the value 0 0.0357 and I want to divide the whole thing, the entire thing by the slope, which is 80,715. So I got a value, see? So it's somewhere between six and seven. So which means that my value is correct. And I would do the same, my absorbance minus 0 0.0357 divided by 80.715. So that's all you have to do. So I'm doing the whole thing because I want to show the next part as well. All right, then average. So in the Excel, you have the function called average. Now we use that. So we want to take the average of all these three. So the average is that. And also we want to get the standard deviation. So I type, so standard deviation of the sample. So I take all these three again. Okay, so what does this mean? So my I have a standard error plus or minus 6.36 10 to the power minus eight. I hope this uh, video helps you to uh, do this parallel dilution calculation via Lambert's law and calculate the cal concentrations and get the average and standard errors.